Hello there, my fellow overzealous battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Or maybe I should say your weekly dose of the Black Templars chapter. Indeed, we are still learning about these fellows, today arriving, if I'm not mistaken, at episode number 8 in their coverage. Fortunately for you, these episodes are more or less self-contained, so you can watch them in any order you want. Today we're gonna take a look at some, not many, four to be precise, of their most notable crusades. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let's buckle up for some crusading, shall we? The Gerulas Crusade The Gerulas Crusade was an imperial campaign launched by the Black Templars led by High Marshal Ludoldus in 645 M39. I actually might have mentioned this one before, but I didn't describe it in detail then. The Gerulas Crusade was also the one that saw the development of the Land Raider Crusader. Gerulas itself had been a long time isolated star system, only rediscovered by the Imperium in the late 39th millennium, on the outer fringes of the galaxy. Attempts were made to integrate the worlds of the system into the Imperium and return it to the Emperor's light. But the system had long been prosperous and independent, and so they rejected Imperial compliance. The Adeptus Ministorum did send missionaries from the Missionaria Protectiva to Gerulas in an attempt to teach the people about the wonders of the God Emperor. But the first of these were killed and their ships destroyed but more were to follow, and they would not be that friendly. When more Imperial missionaries did arrive, this time they were escorted by a strike force of the Black Templars, to ensure that the system did indeed take them a bit more seriously. Under the command of none other than Marshal Ludoldus, veteran of the bloody Vinculus Crusade, the Black Templars smashed aside all resistance as they pushed in towards the core planets. The surrounding worlds fell quickly to the Crusaders, but Gerulas itself was a well-fortified hive planet, and its many spires were protected by mighty defenses. Several besiegements were undertaken by the Black Templars, each one incurring some losses, and each one promising only a war of attrition. But despite all that, it was only a matter of time before starvation and chronic water shortages would force the end of the resistance anyway. But Ludoldus wanted none of that. Like a proper Black Templar, he declared that the crusade would be won on the blade of a chainsword and the roar of the boulder. Faced by still formidable defenses, it wasn't until the discovery of ancient Techno Arcana in the long forgotten depths of a captured hive city that the tide of battle was to turn. Among the scrolls and flickering hollow schematics, the marine artificer Simagus discovered a means to develop a powerful battle tank, the Land Raider Crusader. With the development of this formidable line-breaking tank, the Black Templars were able to plow into the entrenched enemy and those occupying highly defensible positions. With its expanded troop capacity, they were able to safely transport a sizable squad of Space Marines and Terminators into the heart of the hives. Each of the spires fell in turn, and within just one month the hives that stayed in the enemy hands surrendered, although the Black Templars were merciless in victory. Afterwards, the system was integrated into the Imperium of Man. The Purging of Centrati's Eye This was a rather unexpected crusade undertaken by elements of the Black Templars against the pirate fleet of the Dark Eldar. A great defense station was in orbit of the newly colonized planet called Centrati, and this came under attack by a Dark Eldar lightning raid. The station, itself referred to as Centrati's Eye, was garrisoned by the Imperial Guard, but unfortunately these fell to the attackers. All the remaining crew were rounded up in chains and sent to dreaded Komora as slaves. This was apparently not enough for the savage Xenos though as they began to charge up the weapons of the station and then brought them to bear against the human settlements on the planet. Thousands of colonists and many years of imperial investment into the colony were vaporized. 
Unknown to the Dark Eldar though, a Black Templar battle barge was stationed in orbit on the other side of the planet. The Black Templars had been called to the world a week earlier to assist in the removal of any native hostile aliens to the colony. Upon receiving the distress signals emanating from the orbital defense platform, the Dark Eldar threat was discovered. The Black Templars were famous for their utter hatred of the Eldar, and after uttering a short oath, they swore not to rest until the Dark Eldar were destroyed. Thunderhawk scrambled to pick up the ground forces and then rendezvous with the battle barge. And so, within just one hour of the devastating blast from Centrati's eye to the planet, the Black Templars were on their way to drive out the aliens and exact vengeance. On reaching the station, however, they discovered something bizarre. Another force was already attacking the Dark Eldar. And these were the Dark Eldar's counterparts, the Craftworld Eldar, which had appeared out of nowhere to battle their twisted cousins. Faced with a large number of the Xenos, the Black Templars attacked both of them. Although the fighting did ultimately go onto the surface of the planet, both the alien forces were decimated by the assault of the Black Templars. Centrati's eye was ultimately retaken and cleansed of any Xenos taint, while the world of Centrati itself was made safe for human colonization again. The Cleansing of Hive Fatus This was a crusade against a gene-stealer cult discovered by the Inquisition upon the world of Nevaria II. The Black Templars were called upon to aid in the extermination of a small but powerful heretical cult on the world. This menace was investigated initially by an agent of the Ordo Hereticus working in the overpopulated levels of Hive Fatus, a Nevarian hive city. Soon, the agent discovered that the spires of Fatus held a more sinister secret than anyone would have imagined. Behind the spread of the cult's influence was a powerful and malevolent entity. Further investigation, alongside the costly covert strike by a kill team of the Death Watch, would uncover a powerful Tyranid gene stealer broodlord at work. The creature somehow had managed to infiltrate and infect the minds of a large portion of the population of the Hive without anyone knowing. It did become obvious that Hive Fatus was becoming a staging ground for an invasion by a Tyranid Hive fleet. The Hive city would have to be purged if the rest of the planet would have even a chance to avoid exterminators. The Black Templars stepped up to the challenge of returning the Emperor's Light to Hive Fatus with their usual righteous zeal. The Broodlord and its foul kin managed to anchor themselves deep in the hive's blackened depths. The removal of the taint would take some considerable effort and time on the Black Templar's part. This labyrinth of tunnels, accessways, ducts and forgotten settlements in the Underhive would prove to be a deadly and unique battlefield. It was here that the Black Templars fought terrifying battles in the cramped corridors against the Tyranid threat. Slowly, and at great cost, each sector of the city was cleared from the bottoms up. High Fatus, and then the entire world of Nevaria II, was eventually saved from exterminators only due to the zealous efforts of the Black Templars. The Empyrean Crusade this one was another crusade declared by the Black Templars against the force of Corn Chaos Cultists on the world of Empyrean IX. This Chaos Army was composed of over 4,000 traitors of the renegade Gaffalamor 24th Imperial Guard Regiment, along with Gurian mutineers and some cavalry. With a force of only 30 Black Templar brothers and not enough ammo to go around, Castellan Athelanus, the commander, attempted to put into motion an audacious plan. The second of Athelanus, a Sergeant Valerian, began to question the commander's going against everything the Black Templars believed in. The Castellan ordered the men to make a tactical withdrawal, forcing the frenzied Blood God worshippers to advance each time his forces pulled back. By denying them an outlet to satiate their bloodlust, the heretics were driven into an uncontrollable frenzy. Unable to contain their frenzy, the cultists turned on themselves and began butchering each other in their all-consuming desire to spill blood. 
Even their frenzied leader, a corn champion called the Manskinner, was unable to keep them from going at each other's throats. With the ground forces of the cultists spent after slaughtering one another, two Black Templar warships arrived in the system and destroyed the vessels of the heretics. The crusade would end in the total annihilation of the heretics. In the battle's aftermath, Sergeant Valerian questioned his commander as to why he didn't explain the plan. A felonist explained in turn that he didn't have to explain the plan. As commander, his word was law, for he did not achieve this rank by pure chance. His purpose was to lead his men, and their purpose was to follow. If this order broke down, all would be lost. Some of the Castellan's men would eventually rise too to a position where they would lead other brothers of the chapter. And then they would remember the lesson they had learned on Empyrean 9. Above everything, above procedure, and above mercy, and even above honor, is always victory. It is only through victory that they truly honor the Emperor and their fellow man. To fail was the greatest shame. They had retreated, yes, in the face of the enemy, but there was no shame in that, because by doing so, they had won their victory. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about a few more well-known crusades of the Black Templars for today. Obviously, these are not all their famous campaigns that they took part in. I just had to select a few which were just long enough to be interesting, but not too long as just one to occupy the entire video. I will probably make another one of these on the Crusades by the end of the Black Templar's coverage. And of course, if you guys enjoy them too. What are your thoughts on these particular events? Did you know about any of these Crusades? Would you have acted differently if you were the commander? Do share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like, share, and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you a healthy and awesome day. The Emperor Protects.